Uh, I know I haven't been on the channel in a little bit, um, but I had a deck profile I wanted to give to you guys. Um, I went up to the Indianapolis Regional past, uh, this past Saturday and got top 16 um, with Sky Striker. Um, so why did I choose to play this deck? Uh, I just think it's the best engine in a vacuum in the game. Danger FDK is probably the best deck right now, but um, this is the best engine. I just really like this deck. It's really fun, and I really wanted something that was going to get me my invite. Uh, so I went with this. Um, I went X2 after 9 rounds and finished 16th. Um, maybe could have been X1 depending on some things, but I'll, I'll get into the matchups later. Um, but right now I'll just get into the deck profile. Uh, so we started, I'm just going to go engine first and then tech cards instead of monster spell traps. So uh, your best, uh, well I guess your only monster, uh, Sky Striker Ace Ray. Uh, so this card is your main engine card, obviously. If you don't see this card, you probably lose, but yeah, that's self-explanatory. Uh, three Engage, that standard. Uh, three Widow Anchor, that standard. Um, two Multi-Roll and three Field Spell, which is kind of backwards from the trend right now to play three of this and two of this. Uh, I actually think that's kind of incorrect, though, because like I said earlier, if you don't see Ray, um, you only have two lines of play if you don't draw a ray or have access to ray and the first one is wait until you draw a ray and the other one is just scoop because you're not going to win that game. So this actually doesn't do anything on its own if you don't have a hand, but if you don't have a hand and you draw this, you can at least dig three cards deeper into your deck to maybe get to ray. So that's why I play three of this and two of this. If I had unlimited space, I'd play three and three, but I wanted to play other stuff so I cut this to two and it's perfectly fine at two, it was great all day. If I was expecting to play a ton of Sky Striker Mirrors, I'd probably play three, but I was just kind of building it a little more towards the field and I just, I'd rather draw, I, this is a little bit clunky at three, I had a hand where I drew two of this and a terraforming, but I still won that game because it ended up ultimately getting me to Ray and that's what you want because this deck still has consistency problems um, and this just helps fix it a little bit so I think you should max out on it. Um, and then for the one ofs, one drones, one shark cannon, one afterburner, one eagle booster, one Hercules base. So this is self-explanatory. This is just a really good card. Um, this is good removal. Uh, this, I guess, is a little weird, just playing one of this. I think that's kind of the trend right now, though, because this doesn't have a lot of application outside of the mirror. Um, I kind of wanted a second one because I do really like this card, um, just as protection. Um, but yeah, one is fine. If Sky Striker becomes the most represented deck again, then I'd bump this up, but right now one is fine. Um, I've seen people cut this. Um, I don't think you should. This card's really good. It was great for me all day. Uh, it gives you the ability to play infinitely, which is nice, theoretically anyways. And it also just helps answer stuff like Scapegoat, because like if they flip Scapegoat, you just go, okay, quip, attack, draw two, and then you probably win that game anyway. Um, and also, it's just... I, I, it's, it makes you feel safer, I guess you could say, because like I don't have a problem um, going through my extra deck and just using stuff as bait to out things because I know that after I go through two Kagari, I can just search this and phase with Shizuku, shuffle back the two that I used already and just keep looping them. So it's fine. So I don't think you should cut this card. I think it's really good. Um, and then just a couple consistency support cards, two terraforming for the uh, field spell, one rota for Ray, and then just draw an extra card, puts an extra spell in grave. Uh, so that's all for the engine. Um, that's about half your deck. That's another reason I really like this deck is that um, you have about half your deck engine and the rest of it you can build however you want. You can tailor it to specific matchups. You can, uh, you know, do whatever. You can try to just make it spell turbo. Um, but next thing I put in after that was hand traps. So I played three Ash and two Bell. Uh, so shout out to uh, Michael for letting me borrow these. Shout out to Emerson for letting me borrow these. Um, Ash is great, you need it for shared ride, um, and it's just all around the best hand trap right now. Um, Bell, I've never been too crazy about, but it was actually really, really good for me on Saturday. Every time I drew it, it was great. I hit a Monster Reborn with this, I hit a Soul Charge with this, and you can stop the Ray Loop with this, hit Reincarnations with this, it's just, it's really great. So, if I had more, or if Emerson had more, I guess, I might, I might play a third kind of wanted one but yeah it was pretty good um and then just some more tech cards i played two mst it's actually one of my favorite cards in the deck and three twin twister for back row removal um this i think should be 
in every deck still right now, at least somewhere in the mainer side, because it's just such a blowout card against Sky Striker, Ultra Geist, uh, Trick Star. It's just really, really good. MST is a little unusual, um, but this is one reason why I justified not playing three multi roll, because multi roll on the field spell is a great play but so is MST, and MST the field spell actually puts an extra spell in grave for you, so it helped me get to that three spells in grave requirement a lot. Um, also, it just has a dual use because multi-roll can't destroy back row, and I used that chain to an Imperial Order with this, it goes and match with this, like, I hit light stages with this when they tried to activate it. MST was just great. I, I honestly, I would play three if I had the space, but I think two's fine in the main at least. But yeah, that was pretty great. Um, last three spells in the deck, I played three Shared Ride. This is also a little bit unusual. People have been cutting this from the main. Um, and actually, uh, me and Justin went up there, but our friends Marshall and Matthew came uh, too. And Matthew played Pendulum, but Marshall was playing Sky Striker like I was. And he cut these from his list. Um, and we were talking about it the night before, and he just didn't really like these. And I totally understood um, his reasoning. But... My reasoning is like, yeah, if you play against something that's not Striker or not Trick Star, all this does is one for one. Like you activate it and you might get one card, about, card out of it and that's pretty much it. Um, but like this deck, like I said, does have some consistency issues. So that one card could be the Ray or the Field Spell or the multi roll, the Engage that you're looking for. So that's fine. It's also just an extra spell. But so even though it's not great in a lot of matchups, it's okay. But in the matchups that it's good against, it's a blowout card. Like flipping this, I played a lot of Sky Striker Trick Star. I played a couple mirrors today, and so maining this was definitely the correct decision uh, for my event. Um, Marshall's list was a, a little bit different than mine. Um, he was maining impermanences and stuff like that, um, and his deck was definitely better against the field and tailored more towards like Thunder Dragon and FTK. Whereas I just kind of said okay like those are already bad matchups for me so i'm just gonna side for them and then i'm gonna main for back row decks and uh sky strikers and trick star because i really didn't want to lose to stuff like that and it just turned out it worked out for me because that's pretty much all i played um so yeah i actually really like this in the main i don't know if i would do it going forward at different events but it was good for this one at least um last four cards in the deck three strike and one warning or judgment sorry not warning um so these are really good when you can resolve them. Uh, they got light staged a lot, because like I said, I, play, I played against a lot of Sky Striker Trick Star. Um, but still, um, I, I was kind of like up in the air about this. Like it's great, like I said, when you can resolve it, but a lot of times like against like Danger FTK, it doesn't usually do enough. Um, against Sky Strikers uh, and Trick Star, like they have outs if they're maining Twin Twister and stuff too. So, you know, it is what it is there, but when you get it off, it's great. So I would probably play these again, actually, because this gave me a huge advantage in the mirror. Because the uh, two mirrors I faced, I lost to one, but one of my mirrors was not maining this or shared ride. So, I mean, that game one was going to be mine pretty much regardless. Um, Judgment, I'm kind of indifferent towards. I never drew it. It was my 40th card. I was deciding between that and another Widow Anchor, or not another Widow Anchor, another Eagle Booster. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I never drew it. I would probably play it again if I had to, but I would be totally okay cutting this for another Eagle Booster as well. Um, so that's the main deck, 40 cards. Um, if you'll notice, I didn't play the Foolish Burial Goods engine. Um, I like that engine, it's good, but like I just didn't have room for it, and it doesn't do enough for me, because like, it's just, it's th those cards don't really do anything. They just turbo spells into your grave, but I figured I can do that naturally anyway. Not turn one usually, but by t if I go first, by turn three, I have three spells in grave every time, and it's fine. And I just wanted stuff like this um, and this because they're blowout cards against certain things. So, yeah. So, no Foolish Goods engine, but, I mean, it's totally fine to play it. I also think it's totally fine to not play it, though. Um, so, extra deck, standard three Kagari. Uh, nothing to say there. Standard three Shizuku. And the what should be standard, three Hayate. Um, so, I actually was not playing three of this so the night before the event. I cut one because the extra deck space in this deck is actually pretty tight for what I wanted to play. Uh, Marshall convinced me to play three, though, and that turned out to be the correct decision because the third one did come up. And the play where you have Field Spell and Ray to start your game happens a lot, where you go uh, activate Field Spell, uh, Normal Ray, Effect Target Ray, Chain Ray. And if that's your starting play, you don't want to summon this because if you reveal engage off this, you already used your Kagari for the turn, so you can't add it back. 
you don't want to summon this because if you reveal anything for the turn that you want to add back, then you have to make Hikari add it back. You don't get to make Shizuku, so you don't get your search. So you have to make uh, Hayate as just a burner card um, to search your three for free. And I just did not like having um, only two of this because then if you use one, you only have one left. So then if it goes back around to turn three and you still don't have engage and you have to make Hayate to attack and send it and they have an answer for it, like Valor, Strike, whatever, all of a sudden you're basically out like an engage searcher. So um, I, I already felt uneasy about it, um, cutting it to two for Ningirsu, uh, but Marshall convinced me to change it back to three and just cut Ningirsu and that turned out to be correct. He was definitely right about that. Um, so that's nine. Um, then I played one Clara and Rushka. This is just for Secret Village against Altergeist. Um, I never played it, so it didn't come up. Um, but even when I was testing against it online, a lot of times when I make this, they have an answer for it anyway, and I still can't out the Secret Village. And like, even if I, even if you get to play under this, the thing is like, you can't make stuff, you can't make your Kagari. So you're basically restricted to just drawing your spells, hard drawing them and only getting one use out of them. So even making this, you're still behind in the game against uh, Ultra Geist unless you have the out for the Secret Village. Um, so honestly, you could probably cut this if you wanted to. Like, it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, just if you want to cut it, I guess just side some more spell trap removal that isn't spells like Typhoon's Dusters, which I did side, but I mean, it, it, was, it was fine. I never made it though. Uh, Nightmares, I played Phoenix and Unicorn. Uh, good removal, good removal. Uh, you make this a lot if you take your opponent's monster to swing with it, and you don't want to give it back, and you don't have any other way to get rid of it. You just make Phoenix and sit on it. Um, so you need to play this one at least. Um, and Unicorn, like I said, is just good removal. It's really good generic link three. And it points down, so you can at least, you can't get rid of it. You can still do Sky Striker. You can still make a Kagari at least under it. Um, this is my favorite card in the extra deck. Triple Burst. Um, I convinced Marshall to play this the night before, and it sounded like, from what he told me, that it was good for him as well. Um, so the reason I like this card is because it's a good burner Link 3. Uh, by burner, I mean, like, you can just summon it, and, like, it doesn't hurt you. Um, whereas, like, let's say you take your opponent's Link 2, and you Link away with it into Unicorn. So if you do that, if your opponent doesn't have anything for you to shuffle back, you're not getting value off of its effect. Also, it just sits there in the extra monster zone. Um, and you wasted a removal option. If you summon Triple Burst, um, not only does it like have a good battle negation effect, so you can uh, attack over their uh, Kagar or Shizuku in the mirror and negate the ray, so it stops the ray loop, so application in the mirror. It also does piercing, so it can help you swing for game if your opponent's playing really defensively. Um, but the best effect is that when it swings back around to your turn, if it lives, you can just tribute it and summon back a Kagari from Grave and just keep doing Sky Striker stuff. So you can take your opponent's stuff, get rid of it, attack, you can out a Ray Loop if you want to, do piercing, whatever, and then back on your turn, you just go right back into looping your Sky Striker stuff. So that's why I really like Triple Burst, and it actually did win me a game. Um, I played one Boral Sword, shout out to Justin for letting me borrow this. Um, I actually only made it once all day, and it was the very last game of the day, and I didn't even need to make it. I just made it because I could, basically. Um, but theoretically, it's good. It just helps you swing for game, but it is kind of tough to make. Uh, last card I played is Firewall, just for Reaper. Um, ban this card, please. It's ridiculous, but I mean, it's around, so we have to have to game plan for it. Um, so that was uh, the uh, extra. And then for side, I chose to play Reaper instead of Droll. Um, this is pretty much my only target. If you, I sometimes sided like one or two of this in against the mirror. It just kind of depends how I feel. Um, but yeah, I, I chose this over Troll because I don't think this deck can support Troll. Like, if, if you've played Sky Striker, you know the most damage you're swinging for turn two is like 1500 with Hayate to search and gauge. Or if, you, if you're having a really good turn, or if you draw really well, maybe 2000, 2200 damage. Like, you can't kill anyone in this deck is my point. So, like... Marshall sided Droll, and it was good for him because, like, he used it. He played against the FDK twice, I think, and I think he beat it both times. Um, and that was probably part of it. But I just, I would rather have Reaper, something that just stops them completely from doing, uh, from having access to a whole play string, than just Droll them and hope that I draw enough disruption to stop them the next turn because you definitely can't kill them. So. I'd play Reaper again. I, I sided it in twice, three times, three or four times all day. Once against the mirror and I played Goki twice. Um, I never saw it, 
I saw it once actually, but I'd already won the game by that point, so it was irrelevant. But I'd play it again. Um, and then I sided two sphere mode. I don't like this. I would not side this again. It was four Thunder Dragon. I was really scared of them. And these were Medeons, the Time Lord. Uh, excuse me, Medeon, the Time Lords before the night before, or not the night before, the week before. But then I learned about that interaction where they can activate Matrix on the damage step, Chain Titan, pop whatever you attack with Medeon, and then Medeon didn't battle, so it doesn't get its effect. So I switched them to these. Um, there's just not there's not a lot of good answers to Thunder Dragon. And if you if so we already went through my extra deck, so you can see I wasn't playing Super Polymerization and the uh, Predaplant guy uh, to out Thunder Dragons. Um, the reason for that is because it takes at least one extra deck slot, two if you want to be prepared for every situation that you could that Thunder Dragons could end with. Yeah. So okay. So I didn't want to dedicate the extra deck slots to a one of in the side deck. Um, even though Super Poly is a great out to Thunder Dragon side, it's probably the best one there is right now, actually. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what I would side for Thunder Dragons going forward. I, m I might just still be these, but if you drop it game two, they're going to play around at game three. So, you know, it is what it is. But I never played Thunder Dragons. I got lucky there, so it was fine. I never used it. Um, 2D Barrier, again, for Thunder Dragons, because that deck is... It's a really one-sided matchup. Like, it's not impossible if you're playing Impermanences, Triple Bells, uh, and your Widow Anchors, your Mind Controls. That, that's actually probably what I'd switch these towards Mind Controls, but, um, like, that, that matchup's just so one-sided. I mean, one Colossus shuts you down, and you need you, you have to have an out for it, or you're going to lose, and they can OTK you as well. So, uh, I played this. Um, it, it was, like I said, I never sided it in. This was supposed to be the MVP of my side deck, Mind Drain. Um, so like, again, Thunder Dragons, they theoretically cannot play under this because they have to activate effects in the hand to summon their fusions, um, but if they have an extender to you, they can usually make Phoenix and try to pop it, but that's where, like, these come in because you can just call fusion, um, and then you have strikes and a judgment in the main for, uh, and widow anchors, all that kind of stuff to negate the Phoenix. Um, so if you do that and you can keep this on the field, theoretically, they can't play. And also it has some overlap with uh, BA. It's not bad against that. They have to have an extender, like Rescue Cat or something, or they can't play. Um, and Danger FTK as well. Uh, it hits them. Um, but like I said, I didn't play any of the matchups that I uh, sided these for, so they never came in. Uh, and then two evenly matched. Uh, this is just kind of for anything. Altergeist, back row decks, whatever. Um, you could side that in against Thunder Dragons if you want and get rid of the two fusions, uh, and they'll keep one, but, I mean, I sided this in once against Paleo, I think, and I got it off, but, I mean, I still won that game, but it, it didn't really do that much, so, I mean, it, it was okay. Um, and then last three is just more back row removal, two Duster and Typhoon. Uh, I didn't want to lose a Secret Village, like I said before, um, so I just wanted some of the, uh, some trap back row removal that wasn't spells. Um, I sided these in against Trickstar, Sky Striker a lot, um, and they were fine. Um, I actually don't side these in against the Mirror though, because I choose to go second in the Mirror. I think the Mirror is pretty much whoever gets engaged first, unless one person has a bomb card like Twin Twister Shared Ride. And if you go second, you can make Hayate and attack and search engage. So it's kind of a gamble because if they have Shared Ride, you don't have an Ash. You know, that's, that's a big problem, but it was fine. Uh, these were good, I'd probably play these again. I'd play more, like at a second Typhoon if I had space, but. I just don't. Um, and so then, that's the deck profile. Uh, so we'll talk about my matchups real quick. Um, round one, I played uh, played against Sky Striker Trickstar. Um, I could have 2 0 him, I feel like, but I won 2 1 with like 10 seconds left um, in time because I made a really stupid mistake game one. I didn't have a lot of sleep that day, but won that one. Uh, round two, I played against Goki. He opened combo game one, so I scooped within like 30 seconds. Um, I opened great game two, and he bricked, so he scooped within like 30 seconds. So we were already in game three, and he bricked. Uh, I, I just had the nuts hand, so I, I was playing it out. I had like two strikes set. <laughs> Dude, what's funny? <laughs> nuts hand. <laughs> Sorry, I had the stones in my hand, and so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I just had like double strike set, Widow Anchors, multi roll up, four or five cards in hand. Uh, so he, he just bricked, and so I won that one. Round three, I played against Sky Striker Trickstar again. Or no, round three, I played against Paleo, actually. 
Um, game one, he opened Gozen Match, um, but I had the MST and a Twin Twister for it, so I won that one pretty easily. Game two, uh, he opened Imperial Order. Again, I had the MST for it, so that was nice. Uh, that was kind of a grind game. We both evenly matched each other. Um, I think he evenly matched me twice, actually. I don't remember exactly, but um, I won in a grind game because like he could not draw any monsters to save his life. So there was that. Uh, round four was Sky Striker Trickstar again. Um, I believe I 2 owed that um, fairly easily. Um, round five is my first loss. I played against Sky Striker, the mirror. Um, or actually, round four, I played against Sky Striker, pure striker. And I 2 owed that, that's what it was. Round five, I played against the mirror again, and that was one of the situations where I didn't have Ray, so I just lost. Um, I got two of my, probably two worst hands I've drawn all day. Um, so nothing to say there, like, I mean, he just kind of handed my ass to me, but, um, <laughs> on a silver platter. Uh, round two, or round, <laughs> round six. Round six, I played, uh, Sky Striker Trickstar again, 2-1 to that one. Um, round seven was my second loss. Um, this game, I, or this match, I feel like I could have won. Uh, we got deck checked, uh, so we got a time extension, but game one, like he, he went second, I think. I didn't open well, and he just killed me. Uh, game two, um, this one took up most of our time. There's like four minutes left and we got done. Um, he was at like 7,600 life points. He gets me down to 800. He actually reapered me game or uh, turn one for Kagari, so I only had one to work with. Um, so I like grinded him out. Uh, he used all three of his light stages, two of his candinas. I think all of his Lycorises were engraved. Uh, he had a Lily Bell in hand though, but I made my Shizuku, or I made my Kagari, and it had like 3,000 something attack, and I just sat on it and a Hercules base, and he kept setting cards, because he knew I had an anchor set, so he couldn't summon Lily Bell. Um, and I just kept attacking over his stuff. I drew like eight cards off of Hercules base. Uh, so it hits time in the round, and he's like, all right, well, my life points are higher in the game. And I was like, we have the extension. He was like, oh. So I guess he forgot about that. Um, so yeah, I managed to win that game somehow. <laughs> but uh, game three, um, I feel like I would have won this game had it not gone into time. And I was really worried he was just going to slow play me and summon Lycoris, but he didn't. He played out his turn. I get to my turn. I have two ways to access Ray. I had uh, Engage, and then I had Multi-Roll Field Spell. Um, I went engaged, he had Ash, um, and I was I was already down 400 life points because of a Lycoris burn. And But if I just could just make Hayate attack for game, that would have been it. And then, uh, so he Ashes my engage, and then I like activate something else, I guess pop a back row, MST, he chains scapegoat. And I'm like, okay, field spell, multi-roll, roll target field spell. And he goes heavy storm duster on my multi-roll. So I had one card left in hand, it was Hercules base, I had to set it. Field spell target. I revealed three. None of them was a way to get to Ray, so I just scooped, and I was like, all right, you got it, man. Um, so I feel like, you know, I probably could have won that one, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, round eight, I played against Sky Striker Trickstar again, I believe. Yeah, and then I 2 owed that one. Um, I don't really remember that one very clearly. In round nine, I played against Goki, and I got that one 2-1, I believe. Um, so that was the whole event. Um, I haven't been making a lot of videos lately, but I finally got a new computer, so there's that. Uh, so I might be able to start uploading consistently. I'm thinking maybe a, uh, a video every two weeks starting out, uh, because that's kind of slow and we're still in the college semester. So after that, expect that to ramp up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so that was my top 16 deck profile, and I will see you guys in another video.